or they bring the uh, from the internet the coming of the moon. First day, how big is it? Second day, around 14 day. You know, how does it go up and then all the way down, mm -hmm. and then dark night. Second grader, even fifth grader, probably not know that there are no more peace. They may not even know this. You know, because we don't hardly ever talk about peace anymore. So they may not know that, but more they will understand easily, right? Okay. So why do we follow the moon calendar? Good question. In the Muslim calendar? Yeah. Okay. And just a short answer would be, Muslim calendar has perfect 360 days. Sun calendar, we always have to add those 31 days, and then we have to subtract a couple of days in February to make it, you know, to adjust to the, those calendar. The reason that we or the people follow the moon rather than sun was for the traveling purposes. Because with the moon, you can, you know what time it is, how far are you going, or where are you going, you can tell all that. With the uh, sun, it's really hard, you know, to tell the days and the, the dates or the days. They will say, okay, I started on the, when the moon was this big, and they would know, I mean, at that time, the moon is this big, today is 4th or 5th. And I've been traveling for 14 days. And I was supposed to get there in 10 days. I must be lost. With the sun, you will not be able to say that. So it, it is, if you look at the old way of journey, moon was perfect way of following it compared to the sun. Yes, sun is also has a purpose because sun will tell you <coughs> if you're going south or north or east or west. Mm. So it does have a purpose. It's not that it doesn't have a purpose. But moon was the one who would tell you how long it take you or how long would it or should have taken you to get there. And if you have lost. Because if you have, you were supposed to, you know, I don't know all the story if you read that. I was, I'm supposed to get there on full moon. That's mm. how they would talk. Mm. You know, and they said, okay, full moon is there. I'm not here. I'm, a, I'm lost, and they would know, right? I just wanted to add that there's a Quranic verse of 2.189, mm -hmm. which was specifically mentions the concept of new moon, which says that um, they ask you about the new moons, say there are times fixed for mankind and for pilgrimage. So the idea that these are, you yeah. can calculate times, right. so it's a way of measuring and understanding. Yeah. Wow. Okay. You want me to What's do next? Yeah. yeah. So there was a... Um, um, RAC teacher I was talking to um, in Chicago actually and we came to discuss a very different topic and um, it gave me an idea to talk to you guys too because you are teaching RAC and it's very interesting <clears throat> though I would say it's, it's more to do with reflection for us individually we need to think about it so let me let me just share my you know talk what I had with her and then we all need to think about it in ourselves it's about our belief system and we don't need to discuss it or, you know, it's, it's up to us. So Mola Sultan Muhammad Shah says that, you know, the religious teacher, the criteria he gives is that he has to be someone who has to have some spiritual awareness experience. In addition to, of course, education, whatnot. Without spiritual awareness or knowledge or experience, Mola says, don't give them this responsibility of teaching. Now think of this from a, in your you know, keep this from a, in your back of your mind, and I'm going to request Zara to pick up the Quran and read the verse, chapter two, uh, verse three. Okay. Those who believe in the gate and keep up prayer and spend out of what we have given them. Okay, so very interesting. It used the word gave. Okay, and for that word, actually, I made you pick up English Quran. Yeah, the, have you have it. All gave means the unseen, such as the existence of Allah, angels, jinn, hell, heaven, and the twelfth apostolic Imam Muhammad Mahdi, who is living, but gave. So the word is actually I was speaking on is gave. It's hidden. Hidden means batim. Now, I may say that I know that na this room Nana Nani are sleeping. That's a certainty of knowledge because I have seen them in past coming out of that room. But it's certainty of knowledge. Zara would say, no, I saw them going in the room at night time. I know they are there. 
that's a certainty of I. It's a higher level. But right now, for these people who do not know that they are in that room, it's batin. It's hidden. They don't even have certainty of knowledge. Do you understand what I'm saying? That when you don't see something, it's batin. It's hidden. Okay? So, that's what Allah says in Quran. The things, those believers who believe on gay, meaning batin. Now, when we talk about IC children, and interestingly, how do you make them believers? So, what, what are they exposed at young age? Magic shows. They see magic. And they get so fascinated, impressed. Wow, he, he was able to give me this coin from nowhere. A bird came out. And guess what? A parent, an older sibling or a friend, a person of authority says, don't be very excited. He had this hidden in his sleep. Guess what happens? Next time he watches the show, but he says, I'm not going to believe in him. He is probably hiding. Now he's not watching the show to get the happiness, but he's thinking, now where is he taking out this bird from? How is he making this trick work? He's doubting it, okay? So the key point was, a person of authority introduces doubt in your mind, okay? Or fact, let's say. So now these children are watching this magic show and they are watching it with this suspiciousness in their mind. And then when they see their colleagues, their peers watching and then excited, oh, don't trust on him. He's just pulling tricks on you, fooling you. It's not the reality. So now think of example of Santa. Parents making them in Christian families, they make them believers that if you behave, Santa will come and give you the gifts. Again, what are they trying to do? They are trying to make them believe on something they are not able to see. Now, when I told you guys the story of uh, my mother teaching me how to say dua, you know, very simple story. My mother used to say, it was hard. As a kid, you don't want to say dua, okay? So, my mother would say, you know, there was a, mother, there was a family, a child, whose mother was very poor and he, would, he wanted candies. And his mother could not afford it. So, you know what her, his mother said, if you say dua, Yari Papa will give you candy. So she, he says dua and the mother is praying, Ke Malapa, keep my laja, my honor, that I have taken your name and promised this child that he will get candy. And guess what? There was candy for him behind the door when he says dua. And that's how I learned to say dua. Now what my mother did to me, she made me a believer by a story. To take example of Santa. We are trying to teach, make them believers. Okay? Same thing. Certainty of knowledge. When you get knowledge, it's a one step higher. But before the knowledge comes, you got to be believers on things which you don't see. Now what happens in the class when we talk about miracles, it sounds like that everybody listens to it with a hint of suspiciousness. And why? You know why? Because a person of authority, a person of influence, somewhere in our childhood, said something to us to not believe on things because it's a miracle. Miracle, there's no fact. You know, you can't find it because it's hidden. So when it is hidden, do we believe or not? Quran says, if you read the first verse too, Zalik al kitab al that is the book, there is no doubt in it. Okay? And it is for those who believe on Gad, unseen. Okay, who believe on unseen. So, when you are teaching REC children, the first thing, the first responsibility is to make them believers. Then the knowledge part comes in. Now, if we ourselves cannot believe or accept miracles, how are we going to make our children believers? And if this is the first criteria, this is the second chapter, second line in Quran. That those who say prayers, if you keep reading this ayat, Allazina yominun bil gaybe wa yaqimun salata wa mimma rizaknahum yanfikun. Those who believe on hidden, those who say namaz, say dua, and those who pay, give charity from their money. Okay, the son or zakat or charity, whatever. The first criteria is to believe on unseen. So if we are thinking, we are good teachers, we are good smileys, but if we have hard time, Believing on miracles, it is a time for us to reflect, go within ourselves. What, why, what happened? Why don't we believe on miracles? Are we doubting that miracles happen? 
Okay, let, let, if, we, if that's the thing, let me tell you the story from Quran, not my story. Quran talks about Prophet Muhammad going to heavens on a flying horse. If I'm a child of, with suspicion, I want everything analyzed for me in facts form, I will never believe Quran. How can I be even Muslim? Forget about being smiley. You got to be believing on miracles. Quran talks about Bibi Maryam conceiving a child without a husband. How can that happen? In this world, it's not possible. But if I don't believe in miracles, how will I be making my children believers? Another story, another story from Quran. David, whenever he used to pray, Quran says the mountains would do prostration with him. God, mountains? You can't even move a mountain. How would mountain go into sajda? But Quran talks about it. It is impossible for a factual person to believe that it's possible. So the conclusion is, I was talking to this teacher and, we, and I, it was very interesting talk actually, that it is not about Quran, it is not about teaching, it's not about anybody else, it, about, it is about us. As me, as a person, what do I believe in? And then I need to sit down and reflect. If I'm a person who doubts constantly on stories or whatever we are talking about, somebody is somewhere in my life a person of influence gave me some thinking or some kind of talk which has made me a person of doubt look into things in suspicion now suspicion is not bad if you go further and seek knowledge then i would say okay that's you built on to get certainty of knowledge okay but it doesn't stop there knowledge is still first level it you have to have certainty of i if you don't have certainty of I, it's still a knowledge. It's a still. Anybody can give me another research, another story, another knowledge. What if I see it from myself and believe? So certainty of I. And then there's a certainty of truth. When we are listening to teachers, they are the ones telling us from certainty of truth, certainty of I. We have read all the books. I can read on my own. I don't need a teacher. The reason we all need teacher, because they are higher than us. Why? Because they have certainty of I and certainty of truth. So that's what Malapa was talking about. That when you are teaching REC students, don't stay just certainty of knowledge. You need to seek more because you are saying that I am willingly taking this responsibility to make these students believers. If I myself is not a believer, how can I ever make these students believers? So if I am thinking, oh, I know a lot, I have the knowledge. No, you don't. You are still at a first level. You are highest level of scholar, study from IIS. If you do not have certainty of I, please be quiet in, pers in front of a person who has certainty of I. And believe what he is saying. If you can't believe, I am sorry, you cannot be my teacher because that's what Mola says and that's what Quran says. I am a believer of Bahatin. And that's what my journey is because what are we trying to do here, journey of education, religion, I want to know what is in Bahatin, what are the secrets. So if I'm a person who doubts at everything about Batin, I need to first work on my knowledge. I don't even have knowledge. I cannot be a teacher. Simple as that. Again, this has so many things. One more point I discussed with her. Very interesting. We all have watched, this generation, young generation, they have grown up with Harry Potter. Now Harry is a kid who has a very difficult childhood. Everybody around him kept things hidden from him. Whatever his destiny was, they didn't tell him, right? But God makes it possible for him to go to magic school, learn the spells. What is this? What, why are we interestingly watching this? If I were to be teaching my kids, I would tell them, you know what are magic spells? It's your tasbihat. It's your ismeazam. If you believe in your tasbihat and ismeazam, things will happen to you too. I can watch Harry Potter how many times, you know, our kids do that. And I always, you know, get surprised when I hear these doubts that you can watch this movie and understand and like it. But whenever if you were to have a person of spirituality talking to you and talking about magic, Bhatan is magic for us right now because we, we don't, we haven't seen it. It's a magic. You will say, hmm, he has no facts. He, he, it's all stories. There's no truth in it. But when you watch this Harry Potter, you believe that there's a magic school. And there's a spells you can learn and you can do things. Oh, you can fly on the broom. You can, you will believe that because it's a worldly thing. Why can't we 
take this example and apply it in spirituality. Of course, that teacher was like, wow, what are you telling me? I said, yeah, Quran talks about having signs for you inside and outside. All these movies, you know, it, it, there's a lesson in it. It's up to us to keep it at a worldly level, have fun and enjoy or make it a teaching lesson for your children. If you learn this spell with conviction, okay, and it's so interesting, if you look at Harry's group, there is somebody who's very smart, knows their spells like that, there's somebody who's slow, but united, they were able to succeed, they were able to progress and achieve whatever they wanted to achieve. They get to the secret or resolving whatever they wanted to resolve. Same thing is in bathing. We are as a group. So when we are united, each one of us has different kind of potential. But we all are in this school, magic school, and trying to learn spell. Whoever will do hard work, learning with conviction, will have magic. Ruhani, it's the same concept. But we got to be able to believe in order to go to knowledge and then to the certainty of I and certainty of truth. So I, this is all about you know reflection. It was just interesting discussion I had and I felt like I need to share it here because we have REC teachers. Uh, when you were telling me about the, the one word you used and I, I thought that was a crucial word, difference between curiosity and doubt. Yes. Being curious is a good thing. Remember? So she forgot to add that part that uh, she was telling her that a child who's curious is a good thing because curious mind will seek, will ask question, and then they will find. The uh, person who has a doubt will stay in doubt, will never seek, and will <coughs> never find the answer because they are in constant mind of doubts. They will stay there. The other thing that you uh, said, because the teacher was telling her son or brother, whoever the younger kid was, that we only believe in things that we see. Yes. You know? show, no, no. Show me the reference. Ah, show me the reference. Fact, yeah. Bring me the reference. Bring me the fact. If you are just saying it like that, I'm not going to believe on you because you're not proving it with the reference. But, but then well, she, she told you that we all believe. I mean, every single Ismaili believes that as soon as we walk in Jamaat and Imam is there. Oh no, further, I, I even mentioned that for me. If you, if you have taken Ismail Azam and Mola says, when you sit in Bandagi, I am holding your hand. Do you believe that he's holding your hand? My question is that. And do you see it? You know, there's a difference. Believe is different from seeing. It is hidden. But when you open up your eyes, you will be able to see. But right now, it's pure belief that yes, he is holding my hands. So when, when I talk about, you know, when we are teaching in RDC, it is not about knowledge, please. It is about ish. It is about making them believers in miracles. Otherwise, just if you think that you have knowledge and you're giving them knowledge, you are not doing justice to yourself and to your students. That's really good. I, I thought that was a really good discussion. Yeah. There. I, what I wanted to add is spirituality only, okay? When you believe in something, it really happens. <clears throat> and people will tell you that this thing happened to me and this thing happened to me and this thing happened to me. And you will always think, how come it never happens to me? And then you should be asking yourself a question. Why is it not happening to me? Because I don't believe she believes or he believes. That's why it happens to them. So, uh, so for uh, elementary kids, how do you explain that? And you know, I know like you said, there is uh, Hazimam. Yeah, so the story that I think in second grade or third grade uh, uh, school, uh, not school, ki mein, ke they give this apple to uh, all the children say, go eat this apple, but make sure nobody's watching you. Mm -hmm. Remember that story? Everybody eats the apple but one, one child. He said, no, Allah is always watching me. Do you see that? What happened to that one kid? He has stories there. These are the stories <laughs> that you need to read and tell your children. Because if, if they don't grow up believing in something, 
they will continue to have doubts and, and the world that we are living today everything has to be concrete everything has to be proven you know and scientifically proven so i had a very hard time explaining even in vidar i'll say actually i'm sitting right here can you sit down you know can you i mean that is a very difficult thing for kids to understand that you know even in jamaat khana i you know kids are always talking and things yeah. like that so which is fine you know that right it's fine yeah okay yeah, no, let, let me let me talk about children in jamaat khana and children in high school and children in didar okay and first of all one of the mola bus for man i don't know where it was you guys go and look for it a child was crying as mola bus was coming in and parents were trying to say shh and mola bus go right to the mic and say you know i'm i get so happy when i hear my children the younger children the babies are crying i know you guys been there for hours and hours it's okay let them be children okay so that's the word we're going to pick from there let them be children okay so remember in children the knowledge is like a, a drip of water you cannot give them glass of water you have to give them just one drop one drop keep talking to them don't expect anything in return back from them don't say oh when i talk to this child her or him is going to be, become you know lukman he will not going to become Luk- lukman or anything you just keep talking to them keep talking to them you know just whisper in the air just like you know ginan farman tasbihat good stories just keep keep you know usko bolta hai bolta hai bolta hai bolta hai what will happen and you will see that when they are 18 20 year old you will not have to say anything they will be the firm believers they will be very smiley than we were ever you know oh because these children today they are very sharp they can multitask they will be playing game while you talking they still be listening to you let them be children you do your job and see what happens and, and pa- parents being parents you got to be role model you just do what you say you do it yourself and they watch you it's harder in today's time because parents are so busy working ex- you know their parents are so busy they don't even have time to teach their children they are tired go home and be- go to sleep that's why it is so important for rsc teachers to talk about these concepts because you are a person of authority when you say something as a teacher to children oh my god they are listening and if you can influence their you know young mind that you make them believer it is so much easier for our parents today we are facing this challenge because parents are not able to do things they are so busy they don't have time you know that's why our job as teacher it's much much harder but i'm so glad that you are trying to do with your child you know if you do that that's wonderful oh, she was telling in few class back she has someone who teaches quran to her son mm. but he was trying to influence the son mm-hmm. by telling him about what quran and shirk and all that and she stopped him yeah said no you are here to teach in the language and the qiraat yes of the quran yeah you are not here to uh, teach the meaning yeah translate or influence my son that's how you keep eye on your uh, on your children mm-hmm. and make sure they are learning everything but not learning anything they should not be learning you know which is outside influence keep the outside influence out once you learn your own tariqa you know how some people they go out and they start reading all these different books and then their mind is always wondering are we in the right religion are we following the right religion are we following the right imam are we doing shirk they have all these questions why because they never ever lay their foundation and made it solid so now their foundation is kind of you know shaky and as they put different weight on on it sometimes it tears make sure that we are laying the right foundation and a strong foundation in our children so they may you know get whatever they wanted to get in in the future and they never will be influenced by anything 
doesn't matter what anybody says. I mean, think about it. 30 year old men or family, the first time they hear about Quran and Shirk and Imam, they get influenced so easily that they leave the tariqa. 30 year old. Then same time, you take the other 30 year old couple, they can come and say anything to them and they will not be influenced. So what is the difference? Yeh bhi smiley hai, wo bhi smiley hai, this is 30 year old, this is 30 year old, one with a family, one with a family. What's the difference? Uska foundation jo tha na, wo mazboot brick ke upar rakha gaya tha. It was not shaking. Yeh reason hai. In high school ke andar, humar pa shoulder pa responsibility hai. Ki we make them believer. Uh, and one of the stories that I always tell, do, do we have a time for that? Finish your story and then... Okay. So uh, I think I have said this story over here. And, and the reason uh, we use this kind of stories, especially, I don't know, when you get into the upper grade, okay? Seven, eight grade. You know, in eighth grade, there's an introduction of Quran. So if you ever teach that uh, Quran, you may run into what I ran into when I was teaching in Tri-City. This is the kind of story that you need for night school actually. So I used to teach 11th grade, but this one particular year, the teacher was teaching the introduction of Quran. He didn't show up that year. He just decided to quit all of a sudden. So they asked me to t teach 11th grade and the 8th grade, but the 8th grade was the introduction of Quran. Out of 2 hour, two hour and 20 minutes of class, there was only 20 minutes of it. So I would take the 20 minutes and I'd go to the next class. So the very first class that I went to, all these girls and there was just few boys, but most of them girls. One of the girls, she was just laughing and making fun of it and she was just like disturbing the entire class. So when I asked, what's going on, you know, why, why are you doing that? So she said, Khoja Lok, we don't know Quran, we don't read Quran. How can you teach us Quran? Of course, I got it. I said, do you go out to learn Quran or something? She said, oh, I go to the biggest Molana in, in uh, Dallas in Irving Masjid. He's a well-known, supposed to be, biggest Molana in, in Dallas area. I go to him and he's this and he's that. You know, how can I, you teach us Quran? So I confess, I said, you know, you are absolutely right. I don't even read Arabic. I have never read the entire Quran. And I don't know much about Quran either. So you are absolutely right when it comes to that. But I'll tell you one thing, the little bit of the Quran that I know and understand, and if I give you a question and take that to your Molana, and he, if he answers it, I will quit this class and I will not teach. You know what she said? Yes, sir, to gya. You know, I got him. Because she was so sure of it, right? She said, okay, go and tell me what you want me to ask. Because I'm going tonight, Saturday, right? Saturday, go chati di, Quran Okay. I said, okay, bring your book out, write it down. Ask him, what does Alif, Lam, Mim means. Surah Bakra, the second surah, don't have to go too far into Quran. Alif, Lam, Mim. If we answer that, I will quit this class. And if it does not answer that, then you will be quiet and you will sit in this class and you will listen to what I have to teach you. She was like, she felt like a million bucks. She now knew 100% that she got me, right? I said, okay, you still have your pencil and paper with you? She said, yes. I said, write down the answer. She said, what do you mean? I said, I'm gonna tell you what he's gonna tell you this evening. She's looking at me like, how can you tell me what he's gonna tell you? Said, write it down. He's gonna say, no one knows the answer to Alif Lam mean but God. Did you write it down? Show me. Class khadam ho gai, basement khadam ho gai. You all went away. You came back next Saturday. 
She's sitting in a corner hiding, not saying a single word. Very quiet. I look for her. What happened? He said he did not know the meaning of it. What did he exactly say? He said, only God knows the meaning of Ali Blami. I said, what happened? I said, now sit down. Let me tell you the meaning of Ali Blami. And she was so shocked. How can a Koja who does not even read Arabic, who doesn't even have a Quran, who doesn't even have read the entire Quran, know the meaning of Alif Lam Mim, but the Molana who's been reading Quran for all his life, he's half is a Quran, Molim a Quran. How can he not know? Then I told her, I say, you know, Imam and his light and his nur is the only one they can shed light on this ayat, alif, lam, mim. With the imams who come, with the imams knowledge, with the imams nur and light, a smiley can tell you the meaning, but no one else. You know, that was it. What happened here? What it has to do with the story? I made a believer of her. Out of her, she became a believer. With the Imam's Nur, you can do it. Without Imam's Nur, you cannot do it. That was the moral of the story, the bottom line. And you need to know those kind of stories. And it happens every single day. Sorry, did I take too much time? No, it's okay.